So Adobe Lightroom and Lightroom CC Classic both just got massive updates and some of these features I've been waiting for for years. So inside this video, we are going to unpack the new update together, how to update, what's inside, and how you can use it to improve your editing. Okay, so first things first, if you haven't already updated, go over into Adobe Creative Cloud, that's the application on your computer, select updates and select the app to update Lightroom, whether you're using Lightroom CC or Lightroom Classic. After that, close Lightroom, restart, and let's get into it. All right, so once you close and restart Lightroom, you've got this beautiful window displaying all that's new, and really there's only three things that are really cool in here. One is we've got the ability to mask out just clothes or just facial hair. We'll go over why that's important in a second. Two, we've got the ability to actually add curves to your local adjustments which is so cool. And three, we've got AI powered noise reduction, brand new automatically recover noisy images. So we'll put that to the test and see what happens. All right, okay, got it, let's do it. All right, first off, we're gonna look at Lightroom's new AI noise reduction. This should make a massive difference when it comes to actually recovering those low light images in your photos. So here's our before photo. And this is actually after Lightroom has already added detail and noise reduction to the photo. So we can play around here. We can maybe go down to our noise reduction. This is the manual controls that you can still access. And we can maybe get it to like say there. Let's try and preserve a little bit of detail. The key is gonna be, let's see how close we can get it to the best results. And then let's compare Lightroom's auto noise reduction using AI. So here's our before image. That's kind of the best I can make it without too much tweaking. All right, here is after, before, after. Let me go into comparison view so you can see the difference. So here is before using Lightroom's old noise reduction tools. Here is with the AI noise reduction. You can see the skin color is a lot better. We've got a lot more detail happening and it honestly does not look over edited. Now you might say, oh, that's kind of unnatural right here on this line between shadow and highlight. We well, can go down here into your edits in your effects and just add a little bit of grain to kind of balance that out. And that will actually do a good job of kind of blending the edit for you. So that's before and after. Let's take a look at our waterfall photo now. So here is our original, and then we'll grab our reference photo, find the same spot, and holy crap, like how much more detail do we have than what we had before? And this is like the best that I could do with Lightroom's old tools. Here's Lightroom's new AI. Okay, so let's just go in here and just double check. Okay, I could maybe play with this a little bit further, just to be completely fair. Let's take our detail up, maybe contrast just a little bit. So yes, you can make it better, but this is still much better, <laughs> way, way improved. Like that's incredible. And I feel like the colors are even a little bit better too. This one is insane, are you ready? So let's take a look at this one. Here is our before, and here is our edited denoised DNG. So here's our before, let's just zoom in, go for 100% and we will make sure that we've got our noise reduction turned up. Detail preservation, we'll kind of take it up to run there. Play with the contrast settings a little bit. Okay, that's about as good as we could get it before. So here's what noise reduction is doing with Lightroom's old tools. Now let's zoom in on our new AI tools. Try and match it. And you can see no contest. Like, look at the skin tones. This looks like it was taken with ISO 400, not ISO 3200 and two stops of extra exposure. Like, this is incredible. Especially if you have a small sensor camera. Let's say that you've got a micro four thirds. Like, I have a GH5. I still kind of shoot on here and there. I can't go above ISO 1600, so I frequently have to deal with these issues. Now, you can actually have a smaller sensor camera or a cheaper camera and compensate for that using this AI. It's going to take a little longer to edit all your photos, but it's just, it's incredible. Let's look at one last photo. Here is our original here of the street at night, ISO 4000. And then let's grab our reference photo. And this is with the AI noise reduction at 60%. So it's not as strong as the other photos, and you can see that it's very similar one to the other, but we are still recovering a lot more detail, and I don't know how they're doing it, but the AI, pretty darn good. So that is tool number one. Let's head over into the next tool. All right, so now that we've tested Lightroom's new AI noise reduction, let's actually head over and test some of the new adjustment brush preset things that they've added. So there's two main features here. One is the ability to just select clothes from a subject. So first off, let's go in here, go select people. Lightroom has detected there's one person in this photo. We can click on them. And now Lightroom's gone ahead and made all of these different sub selections. Now what's really cool is they've added two. There's now the ability to select facial hair, which doesn't really apply so much here because apparently she doesn't have any, go figure. And number two, you can select clothing by itself. So this is amazing, going to save you the workaround that I covered in my last video. You can now select clothes just out of the gate. So that's really, really cool. Let's create this mask. And the second amazing feature that we've added inside of adjustment layers is 
Oh, we can do tone curves on the actual adjustment layer. Like this is something that is so powerful once you know how to use the tone curve and lets you have so many more options than what you could do in adjustment layers previously. So I can actually add an S curve, but just to the clothing or add an S curve, but just to the background or the sky or whatever you want. And so if tone curves are a bit of a mystery to you, you can check out my tone curve video, but this is really powerful because now we can effectively just change the color of anything really, really simply inside of Lightroom. There used to be a little trick here that you could do. You still can, I use it all the time, where you can change the color of clothing. So what we do is we desaturate the layer, then we add a color on top of it, and then we just duplicate this layer several times. So we'll just duplicate, 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 and by now it should be yellow. Let's see. Okay, it's yellowish green. As you can see, not a perfect method and takes some time. However, now that we can just select the clothing, and now that we can add a tone curve, I hate this little minimize panel. Okay, let's just delete these masks. Now we can actually get those effects far more easily and we can do more dramatic colors without having to play with it so much. So we can actually go in here. Let's get rid of our color, take the saturation down to zero. So we've taken all the saturation out of the dress. Now using the tone curve, we can add whatever colors we want. So let's say we'll take the red away. That'll give us cyan. We can add some green to the shadows of this dress but make sure that we take it out of the highlights and that'll give us just a really weird sort of situation. <laughs> so my point is we can now just do really dramatic changes within these colors. Not that this is something you necessarily want to be wearing on a Friday night, um, but this is really, really cool. Really, really cool because now I can go in here, go create mask. Let's select the background. And let's say that, you know, in the image, I want to really just crush the blacks within the background. Okay, first off, let's delete this mask because it's the worst. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to go here and we're just going to grab our blacks and we're going to take that black point way, way down. So we can literally do whatever we want, but just in the background. Now we don't have to necessarily make our subject as contrasty. We can add some punch and pop to the background without affecting the subject. This is incredible. We could have done this kind of before by you know using contrast, highlights, whites, but this is just another tool, another way to do it. And the real reason you want to use the tone curve over all of these other sliders is it just gives you more control. You can select exactly where you want to add contrast instead of just adding it across the board. Blanket can't really do much more than that. So that is such a cool adjustment. And you're really gonna love it. And of course, we do have to test the facial error adjustment. All right, so I've got a photo here of yours truly, the most beautiful couple in the world standing here. And we're gonna just grab a basic preset, maybe go up here into our develop module and add a little saturation, a little color pop. Okay, good enough. You can see I'm sporting a lovely, luxurious, wonderful beard. We're going to hit K on our keyboard, go to create new mask and go to select people. Lightroom's gonna think for a while. I'm going to select person number one. And you can see now we've got the ability to select all these things and there's a new one because I'm a guy with facial hair. I can now select my beard. How cool is that? Lightroom has answered my prayers because now using our earlier trick, I can give myself the thickest beard in all the land <laughs> or I can go up here and add some color. Let's just go to the tone curve and we'll go really wild and crazy here. Bam, red beard. I know, I know, you're amazed. So, so that pretty much sums up this newest update inside of Adobe Lightroom. We've got the AI noise reduction, which is sick. We've got the ability to add tone curves inside of our new adjustment layers, which is really, really useful. And then we've got two kind of helpful features, which is the ability to select clothing, really great, and the ability to select facial hair, eh. The only thing about this update I don't like at all is it seems that we've gotten rid of our ability to just shut off certain sections of Lightroom. It's now like a, it's stuck on, so you have to reset this somehow. I don't know, kind of annoying, but whatever, we'll deal with it. If there's anything inside this update I haven't mentioned, please leave it in the comments below for other people to share in. And if you are wondering, the AI Engine Toolkit, which has a bunch of presets for automatically selecting your backgrounds, automatically adjusting the subject, whatever, that's all been updated to reflect these new changes. So now you can also select your facial hair with the click of a button or select clothing on the subject one click. So you can check those out in the description below. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.